Okay, another test with the new Comrie uh, video camera over the USB. Um, it does multiple things. It, it can be used as a handheld camera over the USB. It does do what I haven't got the Wi-Fi working yet <coughs> because their app. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I tried the other day and their app. Uh, well, it doesn't work on my phones, but. I went ahead and uh, scanned the uh, thing in the instructions. I looked it up, you know, on Google Play and uh, Android phones. And it uh, there's only one that came up with that name. I forgot the exact name, but uh, not 100% sure it was the right one. Probably even wasn't it because I scanned it and it went to a, you know, a it went to a Chinese website with nothing but a white page and some Chinese letters in the middle, which was the, evidently the download page for that the app. But um, I remember seeing that. It's in the video. Uh, I haven't uploaded it yet right at this point, but I will pretty soon. Uh, well, I was doing a lot of video, but they kept getting dropped and broken, and so I'm going to upload my backups. But uh, <clears throat> I scanned. I use a, a link scanner in Firefox, and I scanned um, that pay, that link, and it was, uh, come up. it was one out of 80, but that's one too many. Uh, said there was malware so uh i didn't uh it wouldn't run on my phone and i was i was thinking i would download it and put i have a 10 inch tablet i bought for my mom it's newer that's you know it's the operating system i think is what it is usually is it, uh, with my phones is that they're older than uh, some of the newer apps oh this is not going to be a new app but anyway it was incompatible uh, but a lot of times uh they'll say only compatible with android 5.0 or whatever 5.5 and up and i have like four point something I can't up well I could probably do a custom, you know, install custom ROM and, and upgrade it, but I haven't I wanted to do it but I never have got got around to trying it. It I don't mess with Android too much. I just use my phone. I have three of these identical phones that I've been using for years for cameras. Cameras one, two for cameras, two two camera shoots with OBS studios and then one of them's a used for a wireless mic. And that's because I can't do a can't do three cameras on the the um my, the bandwidth on my network's just not enough, and I've got gigabit routers. But uh, well, it's I think it's more the phones themselves. Uh, well, it's kind of a combination. But the phones don't do, but about the best sale, the best I've ever seen them do is 35 megabits. Uh, their chips in the phones on the Wi-Fi, but with the you know two phones and uh, and the audio, that's that's pretty much what my uh, my network can handle over the Wi-Fi. <clears throat> but this camera doesn't. It'll do. Uh, Round and round back again. It does Wi-Fi, but and I was hoping I would be able to use it that way uh, if the video was good enough. This right now is over USB. It's okay. It doesn't quite do 1080p. The highest it'll do is 1280 or whatever by whatever. I always I forget it every time I look at it. <clears throat> but uh, uh, it's supposed. Um, but the Wi-Fi, uh, as the more I dug into it, and I. I I tried to get it to, you know, to, to hook it up to my router. I thought, well, all I need is to find its IP, get it, find its IP address, and then maybe, uh, you know, just hook it up like any other Wi-Fi device. But the, the password that came, you know, the password, the, 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 num the PIN number that came with it, it's in the instructions, you know. But um, it doesn't show up, and... Uh, and if there's a way to do it, I didn't figure it out. I kind of don't think there is because it's made. It's really made to do device to device, you know, not through a router like phone to a phone, phone to a tablet, or whatever. So I mean, camera to tablet or camera to phone, uh, so that you can uh, it, to remote control it. And, and there is a preview, but I think it's really just meant to be a preview. I don't think even if I could get it to go through my router. And the reason I wanted to go through, excuse me the routers because I'm I'm recording my videos and live streaming through my desktop in OBS Studio. Um, so uh, if I had, well, I mean, I have a couple of laptops. One of them my mom's using right now, and the other one is it's on right now. It's my web, I'm using it for a web server, but I've got uh, it's it's a old it's a Dell six thousand with a one point six gigahertz single core. You can't do much with it, you know. Uh, I do use it to monitor my live stream when I'm streaming, but uh, well, yeah. Last time I did it, it kept 
getting overwhelmed in the battery. You know, uh, I mean, the not the battery, the uh, fan kept coming on and staying on real loud, and that means it's it went, and that tells me that it's getting tired, it's getting hot, and so I rebooted it about three times while I was streaming the other night, which is kind of really unusual. I don't know why it was working so hard unless YouTube is in their new changes of their streaming pages and stuff there. The, uh, I had it just sitting there on the live stream control page and it does work machine fairly hard. I can't do it on this one while I'm streaming for any more than a minute or two, five, five minutes is really too much. And it'll start work overworking this machine. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it might be that because, uh, I tried, um, I tried since I, I've never had a camera that, uh, well, I've got these old webcams, but they're not worth using. Uh, you know, I'm, the resolution's so low. But I did try it out today with the live, uh, do a live stream, you know, from the web YouTube page. Um, and all it does is just, uh, all it does is just the camera. You know, you don't have any other features, but just you and the camera. It worked fine, but after about, tw I ran about 26 minutes. And at that point, I kind of noticed it was slowing down my computer, and I went I went and looked at my, uh, I'll, I'll just show it, couldn't show it then, but uh, see, like right now, this is normal for running OBS Studio, it'll run from, I just noticed, barely got a glimpse, it said 56, so it'll go between 24 and 56 percent, I believe, uh, when you're running a camera, I think it uses a lot more resources than when you're running the desktop. So I think that's why it was at 56%. And USB works the machine harder than uh, running a camera through Wi-Fi, uh, uh, too. But uh, <clears throat> um, point blank. Anyway, all oh, the memory. So Firefox is not even running right now. But see right here, I can see how much memory is being used. It's only three, 362 megabytes for OBS Studio right now. And that's pretty good. Well, it, Firefox is using like over 1.6 gig, like over one and a half gig. So, um, and it was climbing. It does that with some, uh, well, it'll do that on some, uh, like if you're tr uh, trying to use some of the YouTube, like when they used to have YouTube editing, and, well, they have it again. I found that out today, but uh, the YouTube video editor and stuff, I'm trying to find my spot here. Uh, when you're trying to use, just some web pages that, uh, I would say are poorly written. The code is poorly written, or they're just ignoring how much resources they're use, using, uh, or it doesn't work well with Firefox, but it may work fine in Chrome because you know they're they're really gonna they're all about Chrome because they own Chrome. So I have noticed when I had trouble with them with an, uh, certain pages on YouTube when I was working on my videos, you know, doing whatever with them, renaming them or organizing them or whatever over the years there's been times when i just couldn't do it in firefox and i could get on chrome and it would work couldn't do it for hours and hours because chrome uses up twice as many resources as firefox so it's too much for this machine this machine here is a quad core uh, lenovo i5 processor with four gig ram not anything fantastic but it's been doing that since i got this machine um, and at that time i went from a dual core to, with three gig RAM to this, and it was an improvement, but uh, and he, and there is one drawback with this machine. It, it's um it's an enterprise machine. It wasn't meant for desktop work and you know video work. It has only has two hundred fifty six megabyte of onboard video memory. It's basically a laptop in a box. Um, but um. And that's all I was able to have for the last several years. But I finally, I've actually, I've started, um, I've started learning for, well, I've been studying on it and watching videos on it uh, for a couple of years now. And I finally, I bought me an old server, you use server. They're highly powerful and well-built machines. I haven't got it uh, set up yet, <clears throat> but uh, it's got uh, 64 gigabyte of RAM and two six-core processors and with the hyper threading, it shows up as 24 cores in in the so, you know in any software you, you look at it with. So, uh, for instance, if I if I uh, get over here in the system monitor, I booted it up to Fedora 30, I think, or 29, and see you can see the cores here and what they're doing in this software. Well, there was there was uh, 24 cores, 
two two six core processors. So there's twelve hard you know hardware cores, and then there's with the hybrid threading, you've got double that. So uh, and then this one is a quad core, and I'm sure it's a hybrid threading. Uh, well, I don't know. Hybrid threading was uh, they may have kind of changed up. You know that that uh, processor, those processors were built a few years before. When was that? 2010, 2011. This is newer than that. But uh, you know, if you may have noticed, if you were into computers for any length of time, that processing power has gone down, not up. They they started making them cheaper and to the price point. So uh, you're not really getting what you used to get when you buy a new machine, especially if you buy what they call them enterprise machines, but Makes it trying to you know trying to make them sound really, and the darn thing cost what did it cost? This machine, this low I call it the Novo i5 because the Novo with an i5 processor, but just a name on it, you know, easy name for me to remember. Um, when they I looked them up when they were new, they were fifteen hundred or two thousand. This particular machine, and at the same time, you could spend eight to a thousand on a on a uh, you know machine. A mich- not a powerful game, you know, you know, a thousand dollars for a gaming machine wouldn't be the high end one, but it'd be a darn, darn sound better than this. You'd have like two gig of video RAM, you know, and, and uh, <clears throat> even if you had the same processor, and you could have more, you could probably have gotten more memory too. You probably have about at least eight gig of memory. Anyway, I don't know why I'm off on that, but um, what I'm trying to do here, <clears throat> I've been. Um, well, I, I didn't get, the last thing I did in my last video was I uh, I gave up, I wore out, I tried for all, all day and all, all night and all day, really. On I, I was up for hours and hours, and then I slept for hours and hours after that. So I'm not even sure which day it was now that I did that. But uh, for me, it was yesterday, I guess. <clears throat> but uh, I... Uh, could not, you know, I wouldn't dare use that app. I wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't put it on the, my, my mom's to anything, you know. Even if I, I probably could have downloaded it there uh, all, straight onto the tablet. But I wouldn't trust it, so I wouldn't do it. <clears throat> well, they were, what the, that shit, the way they uh, had, you know, that, that QR code didn't take you to a Google Play page. It took you to their website. And like I said, it, what I'm thinking is uh, I didn't want to go tooling around that website when I saw malware. I think I scanned two pages. Uh, you know, like, I don't, no, I guess I didn't. I, what, I, what I do is I get I take the URL and I t- copy and paste, or in this case I had to hand type it in, make sure I had it right, and then I do a Google search for it. And then I right-click on the links and scan them before I go there. Uh, except for I do remember seeing that, like I said, that, page so i must have i think foggy memory i must have decided to go there but definitely didn't download the apk and so you'd be downloading the apk and then you'd have to put it on your device and then install it manually you know instead of doing it from google play well that right there is not can be risky you know um so yeah if you buy a product and the manufacturer doesn't have a google place store page for their app then that's a red flag right there too so i and and by coincidence i went while i was doing all that i went back on i bought it from amazon i went back on there and it that page where i bought it from it said uh, no longer available and so and i'm pretty sure there's one flaw in this camera i almost sent it back but i didn't because i use external mics well I, i don't this doesn't go to the camera the way I'm doing it right now. It goes to my desktop, this SC58 through the mixer and the effects unit. Uh, I, I do that, or else if I did want to carry the camera around and use a mic, I have some lapels. I can. It does take an external mic, and I can plug that in there. I tried one already. It worked better. The onboard's horrible. It just, it's choppy, and it, it distorts the sound. It sounds like their, their, their firmware their, is uh, crappy. I don't think it's the mic itself, probably not, because they these little I don't cheapest mic you can get works better than that did. So um, these little I got a ten dollar lapel and a fifteen or twenty dollar lapel that works. That that uh, twenty dollar I'll say it's twenty dollar lapel with dual lapels that I use as 
some for my wireless mic set up with the phone. Now the phone's helping because it's an automatic. It's got good audio software in it. The onboard mics aren't great on that. Those phones they are not terrible, but they're not great. They're kind of high pitched. You know, they don't have a real great sound, and they pick up background noise real bad. That's because of the mic itself. These lapels don't pick up background noise so badly, uh, <clears throat> and uh, and of course you you've got them right here at all times. And when your phone, it's trying to pick you up. It's automatic. Oh, you move the phone around, get it further away from you. It's it's bringing up its game to try to pick up the sound. Well, you know it can't tell between background noise if you're outside. You know how that is when you you make or watch a video like that straight on a camera mic, phone mic. I mean. Um, so um, they work for pretty well. Um, well. They can definitely, I can tell the difference between this mic and that when I'm listening, but in OBS Studio, the two things that make a mic sound good, uh, uh, audio sound good, <coughs> is uh, the use of your uh, compressor. I have a compressor and noise gate as two of the effects that are in this. And then there's a little bit of, they have like three or four reverbs in here. This is really a guitar. Uh, guitar effects unit, but it does have some specific uh, effects for mics as kind of a side benefit. You know, that's why I went in and bought this years ago. I love guitars I have since I was a kid, but I never got to where I could really play. And I ended up getting really into audio. I used to mix sound for bands and stuff. Um, anyway, um, it has a reverb that actually cuts down on reverb, cuts down on echo makes you for talking it's just right you know it makes it sound uh, much better than you don't want to add reverb for talking when you're singing that's good but not for talking um it confuses the ears you know and it's irritating to listen to uh <clears throat> so um obs studio has some built-in effects and they're pretty good too and makes those cheap mics work. That's why the cheap mics work well and I don't get a lot of background noise is because I'm using noise gate cuts down background noise. It only lets the signal come through. It only opens it up when it gets up to a certain dB, decibel level. And so um, that cuts out your background noise when you're not talking. Now when you're talking, if, it's, if you've already opened up, you know, the gate with your your volume level of talking, then yeah, the background noise will come through, but it, your voice is kind of going to drown some of that out. You know. But um, then the compressor, when you get too loud or too close, it will clamp down the signal and help keep from blowing everybody's head off. You know, when they're wa look, watching your videos or listen to your music or whatever. Um, <clears throat> And the, they're just, you know, these, the compressor noise gate in here, you can't adjust it manually like I used to do with our DBX compressors that we used to use. That's what I used a lot, the brand DBX. Uh, but it's pretty decent. Uh, this I bought in the early 2000s, brand new, and uh, probably an O2 or something like that. And by that time, Behringer's automatic compressors were pretty decent. Uh, I used some earlier back in the late, mid to late 90s, and they were pretty bad. Um, <coughs> but... Um, Um, and the software, well, actually the software in OBS, you can set what you want, but I went with the defaults because there is one thing, if you're used to using analog, uh, pro audio gear and you know how to do that, the learning curve is not just a learning curve. Things are not the same. The representations are not the same. They, uh, in software, I've, I've messed around with it since I started getting really getting into computers in 98. And as they came out with the software, I would, I would learn it, you know, here and there. And uh, the compre 10 to 1 compression would be like the most you'd ever use. That would just about kill your, your signal, you know. You'd have to be screaming to even be heard. Um, and uh, in, in a lot of the software, you've got to go 21 to get that same effect. So it's real weird and confusing. But uh, OBS Studio... It seems a little better, a little not not so ridiculously out from hardware, but uh, it worked pretty darn well on the defaults. I may have tweaked it a little bit. I keep wanting to go over there and show you, but if I do that, I'm liable to break my video. I know for one thing, if I touch the some of like when I, on my wireless cameras coming in, I can look at the settings, but just don't change them, and I won't break the video. But in the I did it the other day in the USB 
this USB camera. Any I've done it before. The, anytime you touch a USB, go in, just look in the, the, the settings and then close it. Don't hit cancel. It'll still break the video. It'll freeze it. And I noticed the other day, since this camera actually has a preview on it, well, the phones do too, but I know it's having them pointing at me and I couldn't see them. <laughs> you know, the main camera pointing at me. Anyway, I could still see me moving and everything fine in the little, because it has one of those twisting viewfinders and uh, you can twist it towards you so you can see yourself while you're, and that's pretty good. It makes it easy to pre-aim the camera before you get on the video, you know. But um, but it was fr it's frozen in OBS Studio, but not up there. And the only thing you can do to fix it is close OBS Studio and open it back up. And if you're in the middle of a live stream, that's a real pain. So I'm not doing a live stream now. I'm just doing a video. It's a, it's a pain to have to interrupt your video either way. But um, I, uh, <clears throat> so I get, I'm so, can't help it. That's why my mind, that's why my mind don't work. It just goes in circles. Uh, things pop in my head <clears throat> while I'm trying to talk about something else. But, um, What, let me see. Let me think about what is it do I want? Why did I start this test? <laughs> okay. There's one thing. Uh, let's see. One thing that's in my head right now. Okay. It's too white. The, the picture's too white. I don't have, well, I have the other camera going, but it's my other phone camera. And this is not going to be any kind of comparison because that's in night vision and it, I'm using it as a security camera. It stays on all the time. It's in night vision, and uh, there's the SE app at the top there. It shows that watermark anytime time uh, it starts recording. So right now it's recording. It, it records when a lot of times the trees move, and it makes it record. I've got tried to cut out, you know, I've got it like cut. You can't see what I'm doing with the mouse, but um, like if I go like, let me see if I can do this one. Okay. What I was trying to say is, it's it, I've got, you know, where anything above basically the bottom of the of the watermark or the advertisement is not um, not sensing motion and everything below does. So that I think that stays on for quite a while after it quits recording anyway. But it records five minutes and then quits. So um, something something triggered it, I guess, because I, I you know you can look in there another time and it won't that won't. But uh, uh, that's one of the cameras that I used. Uh, that was always like my number one. I would have it up there looking at me. That was the camera I used to always have looking at me. And since I decided I needed to put a, have a security camera up, that, that was the first thing I did. I actually have one real security camera now out over the garage looking out over the vehicles. Uh, and uh, I have another one I haven't put up yet. But um, anyway... I can't show right now the comparison in the colors, but the, the camera's just, you don't really have, well, you can. Well, not with, the, well, maybe with OBS Studio in the settings. I've never, even, I don't remember, but I bet you there are color settings in there. I've never messed with them because I liked the colors of the cameras, just the way they were standard. Um, but this is too, too white. Um, it's either, I don't know if it's too bright or I think it has a little, not quite enough color and too much light. But uh, there are settings in the uh, the camera, this camera, and I and uh, what I have discovered evidently, I just got through setting them. There's one, there's just different ones with names, and one of them was called Vivid Color, I, and I put it on that, and I said, yeah, that looks better to me on the little screen up there. So then I plugged it up. So you can't do it while you're in uh, USB camera mode. You can't do any settings, so you have to. Shut the thing down, unplug the USB, turn it back on, and then get into the settings. And uh, you can see the preview, you know, of the uh, wherever you point the camera, even when you're not recording, you know. And uh, I haven't record, so what I'm going to have to do is record on it and see how much different it is. So that was one of my main points here of making this video. I just remembered. Uh, I want to. I'm going to get a rev. I want to review this between the ones I made the other day, which I think. From what I remember, that the lighting and everything, the colors looked exactly the same as this. Uh, and then um, compare the other day to this, and and then I'll make a record, you know, record a video onto the SD card, and then 
have to upload it to the computer, blah, 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 all that junk. That's why I like doing live videos. I don't like having to do all that stuff. Uh, I like to always make my videos live straight to YouTube so I don't have to upload them. But I was really planning on doing a very short test, not talking forever. About 25.25 minutes or 25, 25, 25 minutes and 25 and 30 seconds. Um, the way I am, though. Okay, so um, that is what I'll do next. And uh, <clears throat> just record onto the device. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know how well I like it, but I'm sure there's going to be a big difference. Oh, and I did switch. I had forgotten where I last left the camera. Um, it'll do, um, it'll do uh, quasi 4K. It says it's a 4K camera, but it's all in soft, done in software. It only has a 13 megapixel CMOS sensor. And there are sensors more uh, supposedly better than that than the CMOS type sensors in the first place in these 4K cameras, the real 4K cameras. And I've also seen, uh, well, I've seen some, uh, when I was shopping, uh, some of the like $300, this was $109, and, and it did everything I wanted it to do. You don't see too many of those Sonys and Canons and stuff that will, actually I don't remember, well, very few that will have a USB to plug into your Computer. They'll have the and they'll have the Wi-Fi like this one does, but it's really only good for remote controlling the camera. So and this one, I think that's all. The Wi-Fi is going to be good on this one too. Uh, but the uh, when you plug in the USB, it seems to uh, have its own separate circuit. We'll say uh, this is the lighting I get. I don't I don't see a way to change that. I'll, I'll look again, but. I just set the, the settings that are there, you know. For, I mean, there's just basic areas in those settings and color and, you know, all this and that. And it has plenty of settings in there. You can control it. You can manually do what you want to do in it. Or, well, I mean, you can run it all in automatic but then change different scenes, you know, like preset scenes. But there's plenty to choose from. It's not like a manual camera. Don't get not, – I'm not trying to say that. It's not a uh, – some there are some things I think you can do basically manually. Yeah, there is. You can do uh, the light. The the light. You know, you can dim it or dark. You know, you can open up the aperture. I guess you'd say to get more light or to get less light. I left it on zero. It's just presets though. It's like zero, negative one, negative two, and it only goes down so far, and then it gets really dark, and then there's positive way, way, way up there. It's not like a real. I've I've used and seen, uh, you know, uh, real cameras. I can't think of the right words. Real cameras. I've used video and and still cameras uh, ever since. Uh, I guess. Oh yeah, back in the early '80s, we got a uh, Canon camera, T80, Canon T80. It was automatic and manual. Either way, it was just a still camera. But it had every kind of setting under the sun. And that's when I began to learn some of that. But I only learned how to use what was there and what I learned from the manual. And then later in the early 90s, I, I made friends with a guy that's a real photographer, a great photographer. He shot with uh, SLR cameras. That's what I was trying to remember. <clears throat> and uh, he loved Nikons. And uh, he taught me a little bit. I forget, I, you know, I didn't use it, though, so I kind of I forget it. But he taught me some of the things about aperture and I can't think of any of the stuff. I can just see the numbers on the on the on the uh, lens and all that. And he taught me where what to set for what. And uh, <clears throat> he shot manually. He really did not ever shoot automatic. He didn't like automatic cameras. And then you know, as they came out with uh, DSLR, digital SLR, he began to get into those. And he used everything from you know an icon to a uh, pocket camera. Uh, digital camera, he'd use whatever was available to him, and he's good at whatever one he had, and whatever, he knew tricks, you know, like he taught me one really great trick, if you want, even with a, even with a uh, automatic camera, this, this helps a lot, turn the flash on, if it has flash, of course, turn the flash on even in the, in the uh, outdoors, or in the, uh, you know, not really bright sunlight, but say you're in, like I say I was in the garage shooting pictures of projects, there's plenty of light, but if you turn on the flash, <clears throat> the garage door's open, there's light, plenty of light shining in, but you turn on the flash, and uh, 
you got to kind of figure out that well, how far you want to get and all that. But you turn on the flash, and what it does is make the shutter speed quicker automatically in an automatic camera. Now, if you're doing it manually, you'd have to know what shutter speed to put it on, and that's what he would do. But you turn on the flash, and it'll make the shutter speed quicker. Like a sh- you know, the shutter opens up for a shorter amount of time. So uh, it ends, what the end effect is, is you get very sharp pictures, very detailed pictures. And you got to watch out about you know your sh- your flash washing out the picture and everything, and you just kind of learn that from tri- I did from trial and error about how to aim- you know what angle to get at and watch out about what might reflect the flash around and stuff like that. But um, so <clears throat> this does have a flash, but of course I'm not going to use that in video. But it does have a light. But it, well, the only I thought it had a regular light and an IR light. But it seems to, in video at least, it only seems to have an IR light. You can put it in IR. I have not found the setting uh, to where I could just turn on the light, like I'm just a flashlight, you know, type of thing, to uh, brighten up a dark area. It may be there, and I haven't seen it. But uh, is it on the remote? It has a remote. It's really weird and tricky and barely usable yeah there's a light button on it but i'm not i started to mash it but i'm not going to mash it because some of these buttons if you mash them it will lock the camera up and you will have to uh, shut it down and start it over again the only thing i know for sure works without giving me any trouble is a zoom i can do that see how grainy that gets that's the thing uh i'm hoping i was hoping to find a way to get a little higher resolution through the USB, but I don't think you're going to get. I set the thing. Okay, I had it on. Uh, this is really crazy because on the box or and in the manual it tells you the, what I understand. You know, like 1080p at uh, 30 frames per second. At, you know, that's what I would want. Would want to shoot at. Uh, you can't stream 4K. We, uh, you know, um, you'd have to have Google Fiber to stream 4K. You know. Um, I've got 200 megabits down and uh, 10 up, and uh, on my you know ISP, and I can't. Uh, what I figured out with my phones is I can set them on 720p, and then to 1080p, uh, my palette on uh, <clears throat> OBS Studio is 1080p. So you can stream. I am streaming 1080p, and that's fine. That's no problem. It takes about two megabits uh, upload speed. Uh, per second, about it's taking around. Let's see, does it say in here? No, it doesn't say in here. It says, uh, "Oh, it's got two counters: how long you've been live and how long you've been recording." Well, I'm only recording, and then CPU usage, and then 30 frames per second. So I'm streaming at 1080p and 30 frames, per, or I'm recording right now. But I can stream it at that, and, and usually do fine. Uh, I did have trouble the other night, quite. Uh, but I think it was more um, running to. I also have a endoscope close-up camera plugged in right now, and I had these both plugged in. I was trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out the ins and outs of using them both or using one of them. And using both of them, that's quite a bit of work for this computer. So I don't believe I could do that for a long period of time. Now OBS is at 68% right now, with uh, yeah, 63, 68. See that's. The more longer you use the camera, the harder it works in the machine. And I believe I can actually hear the, I never really don't usually hear the fan on that uh, this little machine, but I believe I can hear it right now. Sometimes it's uh, I've got a couple of hard well, I have two hard drives plugged in backup hard drives, and so they're not being written to right now. But let's see if we can. Yes, it's on. Caught it. Yeah, see, it'll go down here. It's going down actually not as quickly as it usually does. So now that's another thing. Um, I've noticed that using the cameras over the Wi-Fi, it will work it harder, but I don't think it work it quite that hard. So, yeah, sitting there talking for 30 minutes. Well, yeah, I wasn't on the camera the whole time, but, uh, yeah, it finally got down to 20, the normal 26%, and the fan slowed down. Yeah. So, see, I'm going to have to watch that if I use this for uh, – I, that was my plan, uh, was using this mostly for, well, I don't actually need, you know, uh, this is higher resolution than, I ha- like I said, I had to set my phones. They'll do 1080p, 
then they'll record 1080p, but on the streaming, I had to get, set them on 720p because it, you know, the, the bandwidth usage on the Wi-Fi, and it would also be hard on the machine, I think, so even if it didn't hang up in the Wi-Fi. Uh, so um, this is doing, uh, it's got, it's only got two settings that you can, only two things that show up in OBS Studio. You can, you can do 480, I think it is, and 12, 60 or 12, I think it's 1280 by whatever. And uh, you can either set it to that, to one of those, or you can uh, leave, say, leave unchanged. And I, yesterday I had it set to the resolution. I did 30 frames per second and 1280. And I did, uh, I thought it looked better that way. I could tell a difference than leaving it on leave unchanged. I mean, if you leave unchanged, you don't know what you're getting. You know, you don't know what resolution you're getting. So, um, but today I decided to change it back because uh, there's something that I've went around and around with uh, ever since I started using OBS Studio. I had two webcams, and sometimes I would plug them in, and you can't go, and oddly enough, those really old webcams, I'm talking from, one was one of the first couple of years webcams were invented, and then the other one, it's like a 320p, and then the other one's a 640, not P, there wasn't no P's back then, uh, six, uh, 320 resolution. 320 by whatever, and then uh, 640 by whatever. I always forget the next number. I don't know why. But um, plug them both in at the same time. And I by, I wouldn't get this long without them just dragging, probably dragging this computer down, you know, to a, nearly a halt. And um, they're such low resolution, they're not worth, you know, messing with anyway. They're grainy no matter what you do. And um, But with them and now, the last few days here, I've been really messing around with this, trying to figure all this out. The um, When you plug in, like I, I thought I'd figured out that if I plug the endoscope in, the, in, in one, on this particular machine, there's two uh, USBs on the front, and there's two, there's several on the back. There's two being used for the, for the uh, two backup hard drives. And then, uh, <clears throat> so I put the endoscope on the right one, and the this camera on the left one, and I thought, well, as long as I always do that, then it they will go to the right place, the right scene that I had set up at that time in OBS Studio. Uh, let me get here. Okay, here's the scenes. Uh, I can't click on them, but I can kind of point to them. 4K camera. Right now, when I click on that, I'll get my 4K camera in, in its full view. And the Canova endoscope, I'll get it in its full view there, and then I would get it with Cam 1 or with Cam 2. Um, that's what I had already been using before. But uh, so if I clicked on USB, I get my camera. Now, if I click on endoscope, then I get that's a bag with cam that's actually a camera in there. You see, that's what it's for, and it's not high resolution. But it's usable. It's only cost me ten or twenty dollars. Uh, it's been really, really help useful. <clears throat> um, I really bought it to look down on my engine. I still haven't done that yet. I just ended up using it for videos. But um, <clears throat> but I don't want to always have them plugged in. But here's the thing: when like today, when I uh, I just plugged in this camera and I didn't plug in the endoscope on purpose, and I plugged it into that left USB port, but the camera this camera was showing up in all of my, um, it was showing up in every one of my U.S. Uh, Canova endoscope se uh, scenes. It's called, they're called scenes. It, it was showing up in there. And none of them fit right because, you know, it's it's a lot different uh, size. And so you have to, you have to, whoops, shouldn't have done that. You see the blue line around all of that? You have to size that to your palette. It's called your palette. 1080p palette, you know, that I said you can do it from different sizes, but um, you have to set it to that. And so um, it, what happens is instead of it being centered like that is, then you would see like a half of my face in there is what you'd see. If, if it, it'd be showing what I'm not, I guess I didn't, it would be showing this camera in all those other scenes, but not showing in this scene. And I had to fiddle around with it for a while. Finally, I had to actually go into the settings. I went ahead and plugged in the endoscope. I thought, okay, maybe that'll make it work just by plugging them both in. 
that made this camera show up on the endoscope. At first I had it, let's see, I can't even remember, but it jumps back and forth. And, and what I finally did today is I got into the settings. I've, I've figured out which, you know, when you look at, I right click on the, um, so what I would do, let's see, um, see like in the desktop, there's, here is the sources right here. Okay, so I can't show you exactly, but what I would do is click, say that was one of the cameras. I would click on that and right click and say properties. I'm not going to do it now. I'm afraid I'll break my video. Or you can go down to the gear and click on that. So you do it in the camera. You'd be down here in the camera and you would go to that source that was that camera and then you change it. And the endoscope shows up. And, and yes, the last time I used it, it sh I think maybe the ports are stuck with the ports. Yeah, the uh, Last numbers is three dot or three. I think it's colon maybe instead of dot, but I'll just say three dot one. And then uh, the uh, camera, the 4K camera, is four dot one. Uh, so when you have them both plugged in, that works fine. Just make sure you got three dot one on the endoscope and four dot one selected for this. A drop down menu, select once you get in there, uh, select it for the camera, and it works. And uh, <clears throat> that that's what it worked work today. Uh, but before that, when I only had one in there, there was only one showing and it was the 4.1, but the camera would not work when I would click there like that on the, on the camera scene that I made for it, but it would work in these. It was showing up in here. So I saw completely got that figured out. Um, I thought it was something about the way USB connections work. I always used to think they rotated and that they got different addresses. Uh, not depending on what uh, what connector you plugged it into, but like if you plug one in, and then you plug another one in, and then you take one of them out, and then you plug it back in. I thought it was just giving it the next available address. That's what I've always thought. And maybe it used to do that back in uh, when I first started learning about USB and Windows XP. But since 05, I've been using um, Linux. And... Uh, I really never pay, just didn't have a need to pay attention to it a lot because everything just worked and I didn't need to mess with it. But but except for if I plugged in two USB cameras and then if I unplugged them and plugged them back in, that would uh, it, uh, no matter what software you're using, it will you may work and you may not. You know you may have to close the software. It's, lots of times I would reboot the computer, unplug everything, reboot the computer, and and uh, turn it back on. I don't need to be there. And uh, everything would be back to where it was before. So hopefully I'm getting it figured out where I don't have to reboot to get things to do what I, you know, do what I want it to do. What would I, what I need, what I really wanted to be able to do is, and I may, it may be that I need to, uh, I plugged the endoscope into the right one because it's, it's actually got a light on it. Uh, I'll turn it on. And that's really helpful if you're, especially if you're looking down in a dark hole somewhere, like in an engine, but uh, any anywhere where you just don't have enough light. So uh, that one just so happens the way my chair is and the way my I have a computer rack over there and and the way things are, I can reach that easily and I can see it just enough, you know, to know where to reach in there and grab that light on the side. Of the, it's got a big long connector with the light switch on the side, not not a switch on and off, but just a well, it is on and off, but it's. It's like a dimmer switch. It doesn't click or anything. And so then I thought, okay, so I want that one where I can get to it. And so I, I want to. I wanted to be able to to just leave if I want to just leave the cable for the new camera plugged in, and it won't be using up any resources. If the camera's turned off, you know. It just be charging the camera when the computer's running, but uh, <clears throat> which would be fine. But. Um, <coughs> I'm beginning to think that <coughs> may not work out too well because um, if I plug that, what I did today, I plug my camera into the left one and nothing into the right one, it wasn't working right. Uh, it, I couldn't get my camera to come in. It was, wor I think, believe what it was doing, it was um, working in the, uh, I, had, I made some screenshots and my memory's kind of, 
kind of bad. Let's let me go look at those. <coughs> I go on uh, desktop. No, get on the desktop. Wonderful stuff if you can remember how to use it. This uh, oh, software, OBS Studio. Let's see picture. If you can remember where you're at and what scene to be on. And <coughs> I used to be real good at that stuff back when I was younger, when I was running sound. I was really good about keeping up with stuff. Not anymore. Okay, so uh, let's see. Yeah, here's this, the uh, settings I was talking about. Uh, see, we uh, yeah, have 1.3. That's the endoscope. And I, uh, there's only two there. There's y, the choices there, YU12 and YV12. And YU12, I noticed, makes my new camera sh makes me look a little closer and the one, either one of them seems to be any better than the other uh, so I, I, I wanted it looking closer and I noticed in this other program uh, GUBC view there's another one uh, selection in there and that's MP4 and that makes it look uh, YUV in that YU12 in that was a bit grainy pretty grainy I was like, oh no, well, you know, I didn't remember it being that grainy. And then I noticed in the settings, and I said it's MP4, and it was really clear and good. I think it was better than this, but it's probably about the same. And so resolution, uh, there's two. Was there was there's two resolutions that will show up in there from the. Uh, well, let's get on. I know there's a screenshot of it, so I'll wait. But I left these unchanged uh, because I don't even know what the, I don't remember what the res there wasn't any choices anyway. So, well, you could change the frame rate, but I don't remember the frame rate that thing can do. So I didn't want to try to make it do what it couldn't do. The color I noticed was on there's partial and full, and that great, great, uh, really descriptive. I love it when they try to make things so easy that it makes no sense. They should tell you exactly what they what it really is, so you can you don't have to be a you know tech genius to learn the basics but it make uh, that i learned the basics and and a little bit further in on a lot of things over the years and then they start changing the way they call things in every application and so it's like learning it again trying to figure out what are they really what are they talking about basically just click on it and see if it looks better to you or not if you don't see any change then you really don't know which one you want you know so anyway next one Okay, now there it is not working. See, this one is on 1.3. I'm not, you know, the USB. This is a USB address. Uh, you could find that in different sections of your your operating system if you looked in there. Um, and uh, this one, that's the demo one is the name of this camera. And see, that one is USB 2.0 camera. That's the endoscope. That's what it shows up at. That's just what the, the device, you know, the, is encoded in the uh, firmware of, of the devices. This one's called Demo 1. That's just what it's called. Uh, I give me, I, well, I wouldn't get into trying to change that. I just learn what, what, what it is, you know. Anyway, this one's 1.4. Um, yeah, that says Input Camera 1, and that says Input Camera 1. And you never can change that. There's never any other choices. It seems if you could give it like 1 and 2, you might solve that problem can't do that this could be OBS studio thing I don't know uh, so I, like I said why you uh, 12 this one's not working at this point but that is the settings I decided to I did have it on the other resolutions but I decided to leave it on unchanged because I did have it set on uh, I thought I had it set on 1080p but then I got to looking and back to the ridiculous it tell it right on the box and in the instructions but inside the camera it says I thought I was showing. Oh, I see myself and I thought, oh, crap, I'm not on desktop anymore. I saw myself waving my hands around. Uh, I'm not used to having a, something where I can see myself other than my computer. Okay, so I'm fine. Um, so uh, uh, there is no MP4 select. There's only YU12 and uh, YV12. You can't select MP4. That's what the thing, uh, the camera, I guess for the USB, it gives out that because that's a very, those two are very common USB. Uh, I don't know if they're containers or codecs really, but uh, probably codecs, but uh, that's very common. MP4 is a codec, so yeah, YU12 and YV12 would be codecs. Those are very common. Uh, uh, 
webcam codecs, but uh, MP4. Wait a minute, I'm thinking about it wrong. Yeah, MP4 is a con. A, 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 I used to know this so well. I probably went around in circles every time, but anyway, uh, you do need to learn that at certain points. But uh, okay, those aren't the codecs; those are the containers. Uh, MP4 is a container, and then you can uh, use many different codecs uh, in the container MP4 in, within the MP4 container. And you can so the YU12 and the YV12; those will be containers. Okay. So, um, so I don't know what the codecs are, except for I know the camera does MP4. Well, I guess I would need to go back and look back at some charts to remember. Uh, anyway, you need to know uh, you need to know about containers and codecs a little bit to stream YouTube, unless your device just happens to automatically work with YouTube. If you have problems, that's something you need to learn about. Um, I'm going in circles. I can't remember which way to say them. Um, but anyway, uh, you need to not learn out about any kind of, whether you're just say, making videos or digital video, digital videos or uh, which is what everybody makes now or streaming to YouTube or whatever. It's, it's, it's more picky when you're streaming to YouTube, but if you try to upload a video on it and YouTube won't take it, you can, uh, you can, you can convert it to whatever codec and container that they'll accept. But you you can, I'm thinking that MP4 was a codec. I keep thinking that, but I may be mixed up. I could look in something and find out. So some programs will just tell you right off the bat by looking at the choices. But anyway, <clears throat> the resolution is what I was really trying to get out here. Uh, I, I ended up, I decided, well, uh, I changed the camera, it was set on, I thought I had it on 1080p, but instead of saying 1080p, you know, uh, so-and-so, so-and-so, it's saying, uh, I wish, I, 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 I may have made a couple of my first videos about this camera and showed that uh, with the endoscope shining on the screen. I don't remember if I ever did that, but um, it tells you, where is that? It, it, it makes up their own little names for it. Uh, and I can't remember, you know, like Ultra HD. They're like UHD, Ultra HD. And two, uh, one of them is uh, inside the camera, I remember it says 4K, 2.7K, Ultra HD, uh, HD. And then it's just completely, uh, instead of just saying, uh, you know, 720p, 1080p, 1080p, 60. It, it's what it says in the uh, uh, papers for it. It'll uh, and on the line it says it'll do 1080p and 1080p, 1080p, 30 frames per second, 1080p, 60 frames per second. It'll do uh, 4K at. Well, I can't remember exactly now, but it'll the highest it'll do is like 4K at 20 or 25 frames per second. That's what it says. Uh, and at 4K, when you're recording a video, it is noticeably jerky. You know, if you move the cam, if you're holding real still and the object's not moving, it looks great. But if you start panning too fast, or if the object in front of it, of it is moving, then you're going to see the little jerks because there's not enough frames per second. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that, and it's not anywhere near as sharp as 4K. Real 4K would be if you had a, four, a sensor capable of 4K. So a 13, 13 megapixel sensor, CMOS sensor especially, cannot do 4K, even with software uh, up up converting and all, which is what they're doing, you know. Is, um, still keep forgetting to look up what they call it. I keep wanting to call it bit banging, but I'm not sure if that's the right one. But um, 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 I'll just go back to the screenshots and get myself off. And the color I put on full on there. And um, so there's one with it set on the endoscope and it's black. And I knew what it, why I did that at the time. Okay, now it's on the camera and I'm there. And uh, that was working. I'm going backwards in the screenshots. but uh, So that's just how <clears throat> I was trying different things. 
an oh, 1280 by 720. That is the highest resolution I can get over USB. And the other resolution is step way down. And then on the frame rate, and at that point, I had it on leave unchanged. Yet the other day, I was leaving it at 1280 uh, and 30 frames per second because I knew that's what I was targeting here. You don't always get that many frames when you're live streaming. It does automatically, uh, it'll drop frames to keep you from getting uh, caching in the video, you know, in the live video. And even in the recorded video, it'll do that. Uh, you can turn that on and off and stuff, but it's best to leave it on because your video will end up looking smoother. If you drop a few frames, it's not near as bad as if everything gets behind and then you get, you'll get video artifacts a lot and then you'll, or you'll get uh, just jump cuts, you know. So um, if you're like doing a live video, you'll end up with, Video artifacts, like, uh, well, I was when I was doing my YouTube live video with the YouTube live web page today, after I went a while, well, my computer, it wasn't the, the bandwidth, it was my computer was using up too much memory. I started talking about that earlier. And the computer was dang near ready to lock up is what it was. And uh, towards the end, tail end there, uh, I watched back some of that video, and it was getting real bad artifacts, and it was chopping the words, you know, on and off. And then I managed to shut down the stream because I saw what was going on. I went and looked at my memory usage, and um, <clears throat> it um, my computer locked up before I could get it. Uh, get YouTube. I tried to close YouTube, and it wouldn't close. And then my computer locked up, and I had to push the button and hard shut it down. But, uh, so I can't, I don't even want to use that because I want to use OBS Studio and be able to have desktop and cameras and multi-cameras and all that and multi-mic inputs and all that. But, because um, <clears throat> uh, I can have a wireless mic and the, and the, and the SM58 and I can switch between the two if I want to get up and walk around or if one of them goes out, which happens sometimes, I switch to the other one, you know. Sometimes I don't want this for 10 or 20 minutes, but... Because I, I can't, uh, you know, you can't play the audio and listen to it all the time. It drives you crazy because it's delayed by a lot. But I do keep my live preview up there and see that I'm getting video. You know, if I stop getting video, uh, I know to do something. But um, let's see. So this is just another shot of it like it was. And that was, that's the end of that. That was a video I was watching. I usually do that either just because I like the shot or <laughs> the guy, uh, since I'm showing it there, he's a real, he's a real good maker. Uh, he built, he's, he bought the forks and then built the mounting stuff for his little uh, skid steer. There's a shot of in this video. So, uh, and there's back to my, yeah, while I was making that video, my live video, uh, set up some settings and stuff. So, um, Uh, so, I didn't have, the, yeah, I did finally get to the resolution that I was trying to remember. So, all those screenshots just to show that one little screenshot. But, um, <clears throat> um, so, I, going around and around, uh, like I said, my mind used to be 100%, 100% clearer than it is these days. But, uh, uh, it's about remembering what, what did I do five minutes ago, you know, or one minute ago or whatever. But um, so that's kind of another reason why I'm doing more. A lot of times I'm doing these videos, um, note to self videos, because <clears throat> I can go back and uh, watch through to figure out what I did and what I didn't do, what I thought I needed to do, stuff like that. So, uh, um, yeah, I can't really even remember back what I just talked about for the last, how long? hour oh crap 59 minutes okay so um anyway number one thing i, did, I may not be able to uh, change the brightness you know make make uh, make it where i like it better on the usb that the real negative but i just remembered something while i was shopping for cameras i was watching some you know how to videos on cameras everything from really cheap to more expensive cameras and I learned something that I, I knew about. I always knew about filters, you know, especially for uh, light filters. You know, my friend used to always use them. I didn't know just how many different things you could do with them. It basically, you know, real. Uh, and I didn't know that they were actually pretty cheap. 
uh, and that you can get them to even fit these kind of cameras. This does have a, it has a little clips where you can clip things on, and you know, clip the, the, the dust cover on it, the lens cap. And uh, you can buy filters like that, from what I remember. Hopefully I remember right. And not just for DSLRs and all that, you know, expensive lenses. <coughs> and um, so I might be able to buy like a little pack of filters for 10 or $20 find one that get that filters that extra brightness out but doesn't make it too dark and then that'll be the way I like it and um, so that'll be good might even help with this reflection on my eyes and most my the big problem with that is my you know the light in the room is reflecting on my glasses and then the camera sees it and if I put my head like that it goes away and if I put my head way up it goes away but it's right where I want to set and I can uh, if my, I'm more aware of it when I'm, you know, looking at myself in a video, but uh, I do, it does bother me, you know, if, if I hold my head right there where I kind of need to, it's it's there all the time, and I'm sure there's something I could do about it, but I never have got into it trying it, you know. One of the reasons that it does that is I can't show a camera at it right now. That's why I like having two cameras. I can grab one and show something, but I'm using those uh I'm using uh, LED light bulbs, but they are, well, they're, I guess what it is, are they shorter or longer? I think that, yeah, they're longer than a regular light bulb by inch or more. And so my glass light shade, I had to flip it. You know, it's not going covering the bulbs. So I'm getting brash light from the light bulbs themselves. It's not filtered at all. That's why I, you know, I have that so bad in but it actually, I don't. I need more light to see anymore. So overall, I like it better. But I had to flip that light shade uh, years ago when I started using those bulbs. And uh, but that's I'm getting that brash light straight off the light bulb because there is one light bulb pointing right at me. I put my hand up there. Look at that. Yeah. So. Um, there's, there's plenty, you know, there's plenty of things I could mechanically do about that, but I never have done it. I guess that's really what I ought to do. Um, but um, let me check over here. Sixty. It was it was a thirty-four, and it jumped up to sixty. Uh, the usage fifty-eight. Yeah. So you really wouldn't want to. If I hadn't been switching off and going to the desktop and letting this thing rest, it would probably get to where it uh, bogged down. Uh, the, mem the, right, the me memory would get filled up. And uh, we'll be working the processors for a really long time. We'll also, uh, that's the other thing. Uh, if, you, if you get them too overworked, then they'll get to, uh, well, for one thing, it, it, I don't hear the fan running hard or anything right now, but if your machine gets you know too hot, you hear the fan running really hard, uh, assuming you have a machine with an automatic fan that goes up and down between, you know, how much, how warm it is. If the, if it, if the fan just running, 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 especially on laptops, uh, and you keep on doing that, then the laptops will just all of a sudden shut down. Uh, I can't, I've never, not, I had, a, I have a dual core laptop, and I never have been able, I might be able to now because OBS is, is more refined than it was, but several years ago, three, four years ago, when I first started using OBS, it couldn't run uh, OBS Studio. Uh, had a dual core desktop and a dual core laptop. And the dual core laptop, it was a Dell 2.4 uh, gigahertz, uh, three gig of RAM, and it would just, it would. I could hear that fan running, and it wouldn't run longer than ten minutes, and it would just shut itself down. It would get too hot and shut down. And I've, I uh, first thing I do with machines when I get them is. Uh, you know, put new CPU paste on them and everything. All that was in good shape. The desktop that I used to use <coughs> is still sitting there. Um, so it's only a 1.8 gigahertz, and it had 2 gig of RAM. And I could run OBS Studio on it, but uh, I had to be a lot more careful about up, uh, you know, opening up other apps. And at that time, several years ago, OBS had a Linux version for desktop. Uh, wait a minute. How was that? Maybe it. I remember trying OBS on the laptop in Windows 7, and it did that real bad. 
And then, I, I've always, other than that, I've always ran it in Linux. I kind of don't remember. Maybe the laptop didn't have Linux on it at the time or something. I don't remember why I would. I may have ran it in Linux, and I don't remember. But on the desktop, I've always run it in Linux, Fedora Linux. I don't think I've ever run it into Bane. Debane is a lot lighter weight. That's when I'm running on that 1.6 gigahertz single core laptop. Uh, I'm running Debane 8 on it, and it is just not less than half of the resource usage than Fedora uh, 28 or you know what I'm running here. I love Fedora, but uh, you do have to have a more uh, more powerful machine to run it. Anyway, um, so the brightness, uh, getting the USBs figured out so that they're not always changing on me when I unplug and unplug those things. The address, if the cha address changes every time and I have to go into the settings every time in OBS Studio, that will just drive me nuts because I will always be like, you know, with my brain going in circles, I'll, I'll be forgetting to do that and you know could I, I one thing i usually do almost always do is before i start a live stream i do a short test video and i'm really short like no more than a couple of minutes or 20 minutes at the very most but i try to keep them just a couple of minutes and i just go through all all of my scenes you know and make sure everything works in the scenes make sure the audio works so i would catch it and a lot of times when uh, it was a good thing i did that you know because i had a real problem but um, um, yeah, um, that uh, twelve, the, the twelve eighty. You know, it's not it's not ten eighty p. But the uh, uh, the USB, you know, the camera here, that's fine as long as it's clearer than it's too bright. I don't like that, but it's clearer, sharper than my uh, cameras at seven twenty p off my phone so the only thing i don't like one thing that was great about those phones you know i have three alcatel a45l phones two of them for cameras and one for using as a wireless mic plug a lapel into it and then send it over the wi-fi the app i use is called uh, ip webcam for the phone and the audio i mean for the video and the audio you just you with ip webcam you can either do audio or video or audio and video so what i do if you try to run it all off the same phone, then the ba uh, the bandwidth of the chip on the phone is it's not enough, and you will you will get horrible um, drop frames. You'll get uh, you'll, the audio and video will be so out of sync; it's just horrible. So, um, so I learned uh, by you know by experimenting and years of doing it, uh, I can I can run two phones. And it, it comes and goes because the, the things on uh, the bandwidth usage on the routers just seems to, the Wi Fi especially seems to just go up and down, up and down. Uh, but uh, I could do the two video, two, two vid cameras with video only, and then one phone with audio only, send it all over the Wi Fi to the desktop through OBS Studio and then back out streaming on YouTube. Mixing it here with OBS Studio is a really just a big audio video mixer, right? you know, a software audio video mixer. Um, and, um, and it would work sometimes really well, but, um, always it was a little bit, usually the, uh, well, audio and video were out of sync a little bit. I can't even remember which one's ahead of the other. Uh, and sometimes it would get pretty bad, but, um, this is better, but I do think. It's much closer, but it still looks, well, I'm looking at the preview, and it always looks worse than the video. But uh, I've watched, I haven't watched much of the videos I've made with on this camera with the USB cable to the computer. Um, and see, I'm talking right now, and most of the time, and there's also a big difference between usually the uh, SM58 hardwired into the computer is much better, almost right on. It's still not going to be right on, but it was all. Sometimes it was almost right on with the wireless cameras. With this, I noticed that it's close, but not exact. I can it's just something a little off about the movement of my lips and the sound, you know. But uh, I, th it's, I think the lips seem to be just a little behind the sound, is what it seems to me. But anyway, it's not so annoying like it was, <clears throat> and. Uh, 
most of my videos are not just me doing this like I'm doing today. Just, you know, head uh, talking head here. Usually I'm either showing the desktop or if I'm working on a computer or maybe I'm even, well, if I'm outside, I can't do this because my Wi-Fi loses strength out, out in the, if I get to the garage in the driveway where I usually work on things, uh, this frame's dropped so bad you just can't use it. Um, I need to put another router out there, I, and, uh, but I need another gigabit router out there. And I actually, I have one, but I haven't put it out there because of my health and I haven't felt up to it, but. I also kind of scared to leave it, put one out there and leave it because I've had two or three routers out there. And after a year or two of being out there, the heat just seems to kill them. They just quit, they quit working. I think it just overheats all the components, even when, you know, um, they're not, be, they're not on. I've, I thought, well, okay, if I just don't turn them on, except for when I'm out there, maybe they'll be all right. But heat and maybe even the moisture, yeah, just probably, it probably damages the electronics. Uh, but uh, because here in, in where I live in North Texas, the last few years, you know, we've had, we'll have any, it's really crazy. We'll have anything from days of in the high 80s to 110 for a week, you know, or 112, for, 110 to 112 for a week. And so when that stuff is out there, or like, I figured out one thing. And what I was, a couple of times, a couple of years, I was feeling better and I went out there and I'd go out there really early, try to get it there right at sunup, and it's, it's only, you know, 95 to 100. <laughs> it's usually around 95 until about uh, 9 or 10 o'clock. But then, and I would say to myself, okay, at, uh, you know, as soon as it gets na about 98 or 99, I'm going in. But I would, first couple of days I'd do that, and I'm working on a project, and the next couple of days, I find myself out there at 3.30 in the afternoon, 4 in the afternoon, 5 and 6, you know. And uh, one day I remember my cameras kept shutting down. I was talking to myself and didn't know it, you know. And uh, finally I realized that the camera was overheating and shutting down. The phone was shutting down. It was overheating and shutting down. And I'm sure this one wouldn't do much any better or much better. Um, you would need a really... I guess I, I don't know how much heat GoPros and stuff take, but you would definitely need a, a camera that can handle the heat. You might need something really expensive more than a GoPro. But, um, you know, if you can, when you're at, like in the garage, I would I'll be out of the sun and have a big old fan blowing on me so I didn't pass out and die. But uh, my cameras did. So, um, uh, you need nice weather to make out, outdoor videos with cheap gear so um yeah trying to go through what i'm okay so i i think i went over and over and over the same thing about the lighting and the, and the usb those are the two things that I, I want tweaked out i want i hope i it looks to me like i already know that uh, changing the color settings i did not expect that changing the color setting only affects the recording, not the USB output. That really sucks. I mean, that, it should just affect everything. Um, and right now, okay, I started this sentence a hundred times. I had it on 1080. Well, I actually guess I had it on 720p and didn't even realize it because uh, there's there, it doesn't say 720, 1080, so on and so on. It has funny, funny little names, you know, and. I've never had to use those before, so they don't mean anything to me. I have heard HD and Ultra HD. I've heard that thrown around when you know on TV advertising when you're buying TVs and stuff. They throw that around, but in cameras, especially in the ad techs, they generally tell you they know you're not going to buy it if it doesn't say what you're looking for: 1080p, 4K, you know, and so on. And uh, but they the inside the the firmware on the camera, it's using the buzzwords and then in the advertisement they use the specs so and i and like i said on the uh keep thinking i'll get out the there's no point in getting out the little manual it's too hard to read it's tiny tiny I have to use the magnifying glass did that in the last couple of videos anyway but um so i have it set on the 4k the highest setting that it has and i wondered what that would do 
uh, I thought that would actually make the video more choppy, even in my USB feed. It hasn't changed it that I can see whatsoever. So what I plan on doing is just leaving it in. Uh, I got to figure out which one is, um, especially for, for recordings anyway, which one is 1080p, 60 frames per second. That way, uh, because uh, that way, even if it loses a few frames, it won't be choppy. And uh, in in 4K, it's it's too choppy. To, it's not really good for anything. Uh, and you can actually see a little grain in it, depending on what you're shooting at. You know, like the first video I did was we don't get snow much here, and it snowed just a few days after I got the camera. From, you know, ordered it in and. And it snowed, so I grab, jumped up, and grabbed the camera, and turned it on. hadn't read the instructions or anything yet, so uh, I went buzzed through the menus, got it on the highest setting, you know, on 4K and everything, and uh, <clears throat> started shooting my video. And it was snowing, and and you and it actually turned out cool with that because the lack of frames made you actually be able to see the the snowflakes falling, and they were big. And I, I thought, well, that'd be cool if they showed up, but I did, I bet they won't, you know, because my other cameras never did. My phones did, <clears throat> but it did, and, and it actually looked okay. But if I started panning too fast, it was really jerky. If I turned it around towards me and I moved, you know, or whatever too much, it was jerky. And the audio was terrible. I said that earlier. So, uh, and I figured out if uh, if I was about this close, the audio was usable. But if I moved it out, it it would get those weird sounds, and it was too quiet and it's trying to adjust automatically, but it's just no good at it. So uh, I almost sent it back. I said that before, I think. But I decided since what I really, main thing I wanted for is the USB and the all, you know, the Sony cameras. The next step up is to, I looked at used ones. I couldn't really find any. Well, you just don't find them with USB. And the Wi-Fi, a lot of them have Wi-Fi. So the next step up is three, from $100 or $110 to $300. Or a new Sony or a Canon. I like Canons really. Um, um, video cameras, um, but it wouldn't have a USB and the Wi-Fi. I don't believe any of them are. You're going to be able to stream the Wi-Fi over your network and pick it up like I do my phones. So, you know, they really just didn't have what I really want the most. Uh, it'd be nice to have a much better. Camera. And I did realize that some of those cameras, they have, say, a 15 megapixel sensor or a 20, me uh, 18 megapixel sensor. Is that some of those Sony and Canon cameras say they're 4K. Uh, or a lot of times they would say, what did they say? Well, I can't remember the details, but they were doing the same thing. This is a 13 megapixel CMOS sensor. They're saying it's a 4K. Because and they're saying, and you know, the the little trick is they did it in software, but it really, and they're saying 48 megapixels, and, and I actually got kind of tricked on that a, a bit because I thought, wow, well, I know they're doing it in software, but if they can bring it up to 48 megapixels, and the other cameras, the other Chinese cameras were saying 25 or maybe 30 megapixels, and I thought, okay, well, this one must be better because some of the, the rest of them came with a mic and a kind of a a, a, a lens shade, you know, and uh, keep the sun from getting it from the sides, light or light from getting it from the sides. And uh, now that's one thing that might have helped here in my situation too, maybe. But uh, I think it's really that this reflection is happening in real time, you know, in real world. And so it, not that I could probably hold something up there and see, but I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, just, I don't know. That's not really doing it. I'm I'm not putting my hand over the lens, so. uh, but I, it probably wouldn't uh, a shade over the lens probably wouldn't help because it's really right here. But um, anyway, they weren't being as extreme as saying I, my 13 megapixel sensor is doing 4K video, but they had I don't remember. Let's just say 15 to 18 megapixel sensors and saying they were doing more, but not quite as much more. And so they're using software too. So, um, um, that's when, once I real, figured, once that hit me one day, I'd been looking and looking 
several days, you know, a week or two. Uh, not that, and I've been looking at cameras on and off for years, you know, I'm just kind of trying to keep up with what I might want. Uh, within, I, I look at expensive cameras some too, quite a bit. I, I get a newsletter from called Red, I believe, and it tells you about all the, you know, the ones that the uh, movie theaters use. I mean, movie theaters, the ones that the Hollywood uses. Uh, everything from Hollywood to your, you know, your uh, your independent uh, videographer, but high end, you know, like Red cameras. If you've ever heard of them, it'll tell you about every one of those. But every brand, and they'll tell you everything from say a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar camera to maybe an eight hundred dollar camera to the multi thousand hundred thousand dollar cameras they tell you all about them and um of course i'm down here on the very bottom end of what i can afford and you know i mean you really need a use for something if you're going to spend to me if i'm going to spend fifteen hundred or three thousand dollars on a camera i don't need a real use case for it you know and i don't really have that something like that I, I can't get out and run around like I used to. I can't go out and do live videos. You know, I can't go shoot uh, uh, car races or motorcycle races or whatever like that, you know, uh, which is something I used to kind of want to do. I actually was more interested in doing the racing, but uh, <clears throat> um, anyway. Um, What, what I can, uh, this, the, the USB will work. It's not, you know, like I said, I don't like the lighting situation, but the USB is going to work. I can see that. Uh, I can grab it and use it as a handheld camera when I want to. Just, uh, just uh, that's why, I, and I wouldn't forget if I, if I don't want to have to change settings every time I use it. So I'm going to try to figure out a setting I want to leave it on, which, which if, which is, uh, I think it's going to be the 2.7K in the menu, which is, I think that's the one that's going to be 1080p at 60 frames per second. And um, that, that I'll leave it on because I see now that no matter what you set that on, it doesn't make any difference in the USB out. But that's what I was wondering, and that's why I put it. I thought, okay, I'm going to put it back on the highest setting and see if the USB gets any better, like if I get other choices in higher resolution, but I didn't. So I think that's a completely separate system they have it set to what they know will work without locking up a computer you know an average computer like i think actually it says minimum computer is basically what i got a quad core i don't know if it says about the ram i think it does it may say quad core with four gig ram which that would mean you know i've got the minimum what what can handle this camera's usb output um so um And really, I don't see in this camera with the low uh, frames per second. Like, if you want a 4K camera, if it won't do a minimum of 30 frames per second, and if you're going to do anything really moving, like action, moving vehicles or anything, you need 60 frames per second. I never thought it was a big deal to have 60 frames per second because I never, uh, you know, people were shooting. Well, like I. Because, uh, well, I had um, cameras I used back in the 90s, and in the late 90s, I went to an auction, and I bought a Sony BVP-3. It was a uh, studio camera, but you could also use it on portable. You could put it on your shoulder. Big old heavy camera, tube camera. I bought it for 350 bucks when it was brand new in, in like 1990, around in there. It was twelve to $15,000 camera. And uh, and so this was 750 lines of resolution. That's how they used to measure it back then. Uh, this was a two TV camera, okay? Um, and I used it. I never, well, I didn't have a, the, the deck, the, the recorder deck, you would need a three-quarter deck. And I did get one, a little portable that would hold 30-minute takes, but it was a, it was a different brand. Uh, I think it was a Panasonic or something. And it didn't have the same cable. And, um, um, I actually, well, I actually bought two cameras in that auction. I bought another one for 15 bucks. It had a lens and everything and it worked. Uh, and, uh, but it, uh, and different brands of different cameras don't have the same colors and the same lighting situation. So they weren't, uh, they did look different. And yeah, that other one, let's see, which one of them had a little bit of, they call it a burn in a tube burn in 
you see a tiny little spot, kind of a translucent spot in the corner of the picture. One of the corners, luckily in the corner, not like dead in the middle of somebody's nose or something. I guess it was on the other one. But anyway, the other one, I went to a camera shop. Somebody told me about in Dallas, a professional camera shop. And the guy said he could make me a cable for that VTR, that videotape recorder for you know 15 or 20 bucks and I, and I didn't want to do it right then but I probably, I knew I should have because I never got it, got one and I just thought well what am I going to do with two cameras you know I'm only one person so he says yeah and he was asking me what am I going to do with them and stuff I had him tune that tune the good one up uh, and the other one was this one came with a case a road case you could you know a sturdy case everything the BVP3 now the other one I can't remember yeah I think it was a Panasonic yeah this was a Sony, and it was like gold and white, gold with white trim or, or you know, off-white trim. Yeah, the other one was orange, and I think it was a, yeah, it was a Panasonic. And um, it, um, I forget what he did. He tuned it up too, I guess. And uh, anyway, he said, I can sell it here for you if you want on a, you know, what do they call it? You know, he takes a cut. And so uh, I said, okay. And then after I said, okay, and they said, I live, I live like 65 miles or 70 miles away from that shop. I live out in Azle in the country. And uh, after I got home, I was like, man, I shouldn't have done that. I, I probably won't get that much out of it, you know, and it's worth more than what I'll probably get. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to back out and I want to drive back over there. And so anyway, in a few days he called me, he said, I got somebody well, I guess he just sold it. Or he called, might have called me and said, "Do you still want to sell it?" Anyway, I got like, two, I got like two hundred fifty bucks out of it, and I paid fifteen bucks for it. So that was a big, big profit. Only time I've ever done anything like that that worked out. And and my camera, I kept it for several years and I used it, but I never had a, a pro, you know, VTR hooked up to it. But it had a what was just called a test out video output, just to test the video, and it was just an RF connected, regular what goes to your TV cable. So uh, I re I got me an RF cable, and you had to have an adapter, a BNC adapter, and that was simple. Uh, hooked that on there and then hooked it up to any VCR I wanted to hook up to. And I even had it, uh, a buddy of mine let me borrow his uh, DC to AC converter, and so I plugged that into the cigarette lighter on my truck. I even had it wired with a big wire so that it wouldn't uh, have plenty of current. I think I'd already done that years ago, but uh, in my Blazer, my 76 Chevy Blazer, and I'd set that VCR and uh, in there and set the camera up on a tripod that was that same buddy's tripod and I could drive around and shoot video uh, uh, because it, they didn't either one draw a whole lot of current you know and, and so just plug them both into that AC adapter and uh, drive around shooting video and stuff and uh, I remember one time we had during the, during the time I had it there was an eclipse of the moon and that thing Shot, I let it put it outside and aimed it at the moon, and it was really cold, so I didn't feel like staying out there. And I would just go out and check on it. And I left it out there for, well, let's see. Yeah, I set the VC. I always set the VCR on, uh, you know, the uh, highest quality it could do, so it would only do about, you know, tape would only do about an hour of video, because uh, the VCR the most it can do is like 240 lines of resolution. Even the best VCRs maybe 250, and the camera was putting out 740 there. So uh, it actually made just the best VCR video videos I've ever seen. You know, it was just a max that it could, uh, that tape could take in, that VCR could take in. And I would just plug in, you could plug in, you could use an adapter and plug in a mic tip, but it, the signal would be so low you couldn't really hear it. So you'd need a little, he had a little mixer, it was about the size of this, and it was a realistic mixer, and it was pretty crappy and noisy, but it worked. So I would use the mixer to gain the signal what did I do when I was in the truck? I can't remember. I, I, oh, I think the uh, just taking an SM58, and you can't just there. You know, you have to use a high impeed, low impedance to high impedance adapter. Take that from a quarter inch to a RCA adapter cable and plug it into the back of the VCR. A little, you know, mono to stereo, and I would plug that into the VCR. Yeah, and if I held the mic, you know, that close and talk very quite loudly. It would work. I mean, cool, the cool thing about it was when I'm driving the truck, it has, you know, loud mufflers on it, loud pipes on it, headers and fairly loud mufflers on it. it you could understand me just fine because the SM58 is so good at uh, 
not picking up a lot of background noise. It's frequencies that they accept. That's what people a lot of times don't get about microphones. They only accept um, from, let's see, the 58 accepts from 40, 40 or 45 hertz to so many megahertz, uh, kilohertz, I mean. Um, so I can't remember. But anyway, it's not too low and not too high. A lot of your noise is up in the high end. That just irritates the crap out of you. And, of course, you don't want a lot of low-end rumble. SM58 goes down to 50 hertz, and that's enough to sound really good for uh, bass drum, you know, bass drums and bass guitars, but it's not good for uh, some people's voices will be too boomy, or if there's background noise, it'll really you know, wipe away the voices, you know. Plus, they're made, uh, SM58 is um, focused, you know, and, and, uh, and you, they're fine for vocals, but you better stay close to it. And if, if it, 58 is, I'm sorry, I said 57 is like more focused. 58 is a, corduroy pattern and you can move around more without the voice fading to, you know a lot <clears throat> so um but it's the frequencies that they pick up and also things that i don't i was watching a video a whole video series on how mics are, are made and what causes it's not just the frequencies but it is the actual design of the uh call it the pickup um can't think of the name, the actual name, but anyway, um, I didn't watch the whole series, so I got about halfway through it, I think. But this guy who was uh, a microphone inventor, I, can't say that, I think he worked for AKG or something, but of course, he, everybody everybody in that field knows how Sony's made, I mean, how an s 58s made too, but he was just talking about, he, you know, this is how cordoids made, this is how condenser mics made, and all like that. So if you just know your basic mic types, and I constantly forget the right words, but then you'll know what he's talking about. But um, anyway, where the the head, we used to always call it the mic head, where it's placed inside of its capsule, that was one of the words I was trying to remember, the mic capsule, where it's placed, everything about it, the electronics, the everything. Uh, there's a certain... F- formula when he he invented some of the uh, noise canceling he figured it out he made mics better and he's he's a retired well he's retired he's older than me i'm 63 retired and he's like 70 something now i think and he still works freelance though he said this is a couple three or four year old video now but he worked for one of the big companies for 30 years you know uh, uh, not in america over in uh, australia and uh, if you've ever heard of, if you're into electronics, you ever heard of Dave Jones? Uh, he was on his uh, videos. Uh, he, he, Davy Jones, Davy Jones interviewed him. But he's one of the best electronics teachers I've ever seen. He was, I've learned so much if, if I could just keep it from him in my head. But um, anyway, um, don't know why I'm talking about mics, to be honest, right now. But that that uh, the type of mic you use, and F- I love F- SM58s. That's what I use 95% of the time mixing sound. That's usually what everybody had because they're the best mics you could get for the lowest price. A lot of the others back in the 90s, and AKGs and EVs and all those things, they they uh, they just didn't. They were some of them had a good sound if you got if they're in the right place. There weren't anything. Uh, any bad reflect noise, you know, re- noise reflections coming back at them, but boy, and you get the EQ just right. But then, as soon as somebody moved it this way or that way, it was feeding back or rolling, rumbling or something. And I think it was EV mics that did that so bad for me. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in this one place, that's all they had. The whole house uh, it was a church, and that's and I was doing uh, sound for a pl- uh, well, what was it? Oh, a meeting. I helped with sound for a play in there, but. It was a meeting. I did a couple of meeting and a presentation with lights and uh, it's a real big place, like at least fifteen hundred seats, probably more than that. And uh, a huge Yamaha board, uh, sixty-four channels, maybe, maybe, yeah. It was it was at least sixty-four channels. And uh, anyway, they had somebody sing with backup tracks and, and light shows and a guy's talking and stuff i don't remember what all they were doing some about the uh bicentennial i think it was like on the fourth of july or yeah before and they were talking about the history of america and stuff but um um 
but when I was mixing sound for the bands, I did, uh, when I did the bands, I mostly, I did, uh, it was a whole lot of uh, local uh, Christian punk bands, Christian metal, rock. I call them jingle rock. They had acoustic bass bands. And uh, and there was um, electro, electronics bands, you know, uh, uh, um, what do they call it? <clears throat> dance stuff, you know, um, where it was just like somebody might be singing or somebody might be, there was one band uh, called Particle Sons. The guy really, he just kind of a, sort of like a rapper with electronic music. He didn't sing ever, uh, but he didn't rap in the rap style. He did it in the, like in the, uh, not disco this after disco. Um, why can't I think of anything? Okay. So anyway, um, so I did a, a you know a lot of rock and it was they were loud they had their big old a lot of them, well younger kids usually had smaller amps because they couldn't afford a big Marshall stack or something but a lot of them had big Marshalls and my big one of my biggest problems was having my PA being as loud as their amps you know and I would try to get them to turn down but a lot of them love to use the uh, tube amps and and for real if you turn them down but if you you got to get them up to a certain volume to get them to get that distortion they wanted turn them down very much from where they like them then they lose all their sound they don't have their sound they're looking for so um uh and a lot of them just didn't want to and you'd have to argue with them and but anyway uh of course if it's too loud you're too old right well, that's why i can't that's why my ears are still ringing to this day too and i can't stand loud music anymore i can't physically stand it too many years mixing those things but um um Yes, I'm now too old. So, um, but you want to try, I mean, if you're mixing the sound, you, you want to try to, I wanted to reproduce whatever sound they were trying to do, but I also wanted to get the vocals up to where they could be heard. They might not, depending on what kind of vocals, I mean, I did everything from nice singers to grindcore bands, you know, they might not be, they might be screaming, not singing, you know, but, uh, Anyway, you want it balanced, and uh, and I I like that kind of music. I wasn't a big punk fan, but I got to to appreciate some of the bands after mixing for a bunch of them. And there's also was is and was uh, a lot of uh, you know Christian rock and uh, recording artists and everything. And I got to mix for some of my favorite bands and stuff too. Um, we did we did uh, we usually had some uh, some uh, local bands open for a recording artist is what we would do, and uh, but I did you know over the from around ninety to ninety nine two thousand I did that on lots and lots of weekends and uh, it'd be different things you know uh, most of the band stuff I guess was like every weekend was like ninety three or ninety five on up, you know, but, um, so SM 57s and 58, that was the staple, you know, that was the, what I used. And I, I had to actually bought myself five 58s that I used to carry around and use whenever I needed them. And, uh, and, uh, I never, uh, never did buy, I never did get to buy me a nice big sound system. I should have one time and I didn't, and then I used the money at a different, different place. And, uh, but, um, I was always using somebody else's sound system. Usually it was the, the venue sound system, you know? So I mixed on everything from little, you know, like powered mixing heads to, uh, like I said, usually it was a 16 or 32 channel Mackie board, but, uh, some of the churches and stuff, some of them would have, you know, 32 or 64 channel boards. 32 cha uh, 64 channel Yamaha in that one place. They never did anything like that. They did some Christian plays and, you know, meetings and stuff like that. But um, they never once, that, that church didn't like Christian rock bands. They didn't have that in there. But, but, um, but I worked in a couple of different ministries. Uh, first one, and before that, before I got to mixing all the time, I, I volunteered at a place called Footloose over in Euless and uh, from. Nine in eighty nine, late eighty nine, early ninety, until they closed. I always say it was five years, but I don't think it was quite five years. 
And then somebody else started up a place called God's Place over in Arlington, and I mixed over there for the whole time until it closed. Then in the very late 90s, or about a it probably wasn't but a, not even a whole year, more like a summer, I mixed in a, it was a, band, a, a club called Aqua Bar in Fort Worth that decided, the guy was a Christian, and he decided he wanted to use the places, and, and it was a dance. It, they called it a house dance mix. Uh, club, you know, where they had a DJ and rec, you know, spinning records and, and they used real vinyl and and uh <clears throat> so I would do the bands from a like until about ten o'clock from I don't know, seven or whatever till ten o'clock. And uh and then they would go to the house mix until they closed at like two AM. And uh did that I don't can't remember exactly how long I did it, but uh it was a regular club with alcohol and everything. That's the first time I'd worked in a place like that. Um, wasn't so great really having the uh, alcohol there. Uh, but luckily the young kids really didn't take on to that place. So they would let kids in and mark them to not drink, you know, of course, you know, they can always get around that. They'd let kids in like down to 16 or 17. I think it was 17. Yeah. Uh, any, but, but the other shows where they were just real, just Christian ministries, um, you know, kids, it was generally kids from 14 to 17 or 18 or whatever, you know, that would come to those and didn't have to worry about any alcohol or anything like that in those places. So, well, except for Footloose, they did mostly contemporary music. So if you had a, a contemporary, well, some, they did do some, some of my favorite bands, they did. They did come. They did have them come there. The choir and Blood Good and we. I waited five. Yeah, it was five years because I waited five years for Blood Good to get to play there. The the guy that owned it didn't like that stuff and he didn't want them in there. But later he kind of changed up. But the guy that ran it or whatever. Yeah, he owned it. But anyway, somehow they got the choir fairly early on. But most of it was contemporary stuff. Uh, people singing with backup tracks. They didn't have bands, you know. And we would have local bands in there sometimes to open up for them not always and that's when i i really i always thought that was the way to go anyway you know but that's when i really uh wanted to just do that you know when i saw them but um that was before i was really that was when i was learning to mix for real full bands not just like backup track i started learning i had a little sound system in 83 i got a sound system a pbxr 800 150 watt speakers, a powered mixing head, but it was a board with sliders, not a, you know, a rectangular thing like a, like the ones you see a lot that used to see the PVs, and now there's all kind of like Soundcraft or whatever. But um, um, anyway, I would mix for people singing, you know, with backup tracks in church or whatever, and uh, <clears throat> go to other, take it to other churches and do it, you know, sometimes and. Uh, um, but then when I started volunteering at the concert ministry, then I, you know, I started getting chances to learn more and to do more. And, uh, but mostly the first few years I worked either at the door, you know, selling tickets or in the snack bar, serving drinks and popcorn and junk. And, uh, <clears throat> my favorite the ones that I really liked, I'd usually go watch them for a pretty good while or maybe the whole thing. But uh, but we did have quite a few real bands. Fun uh, at the first we just we really just had the first year or two we just really had backup track singers and they were they were popular contemporary artists so they would uh, they would uh, bring good crowds usually better crowds than uh, best crowds you know that they would get uh, they they would let's see I would ima- I can't remember for sure but. I mean, they'd go anywhere from 25 people to 1,000 people in that place. And that was with everybody didn't get to sit down at 1,000 people, you know. Um, and then, uh, but and sometimes some of the bands, the, the, the Christian rock bands, but you know, that we would have, I uh, can't think of all names. I never am good at that. Uh, they might range anywhere from 25 people to, you know, 500 to maybe 1,000 on a few of them. But um, 
that once the, the owner saw that he could uh, – things were getting slow. I guess everybody was tired of going and watching people sing the backup tracks, even though the artists were still the popular artists with the number one songs. I think people were beginning to – and there was more people doing it in the D- Dallas Fort Worth area and doing real bands and stuff. I think maybe the 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 uh, patrons, you know, uh, not the thing on YouTube where you get paid, you know, for people watching your video, but the patrons, the Patreons, <laughs> physical people coming to your shows. Um, I think it began to they began to you know like really want to see live bands more. And um, plus, well, and the the whole Christian rock thing began to be more popular with more people. So um, they uh, they started doing it more and doing them more, and uh, it just depended on you know what uh, it was really different because our local right Christian radio station didn't play any of those bands. It was all an underground thing, you know. So it was pretty hard to. Uh, no, even people that were into it, like me, didn't really know for sure what kind of crowd might show up. Uh, sometimes when you would book a band, when they would book a band until the night that it happened, you know. And they did a cool thing. They would always do, they'd have them play Friday and Saturday night. So um, gave gave them two nights of revenue, and it gave people two chances to see them, especially the ones, some of them would sell out both nights. Very few, but some would sell out the thing both nights. And so, if you didn't get might get to see them, or you uh, on Friday, then you could see them on Saturday, you know. And um, but like when we did, let's see, how did we do that? That just made me think. Then later, when I went to get, uh, started working at God's Place, it was a couple of years after that one closed, I think, at least a year. <coughs> um, did we do both nights or one night? I think we did two nights too. I cannot remember. I think we did. But anyway, <coughs> that was all all live bands. There was only maybe twice when somebody came in there and sang on with tracks. Uh, I think Ken Tamplin was one of them. He used to be in uh, Shout. Is that the right name? No, it wasn't him. It was one of the other bands like that. Anyway, real nice fellow, but he, he, he did... Uh, well, he did mostly acoustic, and he was and, he, and in the band he, his songs a lot of rock and fast speed metal stuff, you know. And he was doing everything acoustic. I was like, oh man, <laughs> uh, this was years and years later though. This was like you know late nineties, and he was really big in the early nineties. But uh, but maybe he didn't sing on track. Somebody did. Oh, I remember it was one of the old contemporary artists that used to come to Footloose all the time. They had him in one time, and he sang with tracks and. Hardly anybody came because that that place was known for Christian punk and rock, hardcore, all that stuff. Um, so uh, I felt so I, I felt sorry for him that nobody came. He used to fill a footloose place, but uh, anyway, um, all that yammering around. Um, all, uh, what I was thinking when I started all that <laughs> was how I learned uh, to do audio, use mics, pick mics, you know, and all that. And like I was saying, um, my 10 and $20 lapel mics, um, if you know what a, a good, what, what good sound is, you know, you know how to, uh, well, you can get a mic that plug it in and it's not so great, but it's not terrible. But if you know how to uh, how to mix and how to use a, a compressor and a noise gate, then you can make it a whole lot better. And nobody would realize that that's not a hundred dollar or a you know or more mic. I'm not going to say. Well, it depends. It, you can buy a five hundred or fifteen hundred or more mic, and if you don't know how to mix. And you don't know how to use, you know, noise gates and compressors and stuff. And it may sound like total crap. Uh, you can see that, you know, when you watch these mic comparison um, things on there. Some of the people will show you. This is what it sounds like. And some of them sound really nice uh, with nothing done to them. 
except for if they raise their voice too much or something, then it'll distort just like anything else because it doesn't have a compressor. But um, SM58 sounds really nice with nothing done to it, too. It's nice and warm. Uh, it's, it's not too high, not too low for a voice for singing or talking. But you can make them better with a little bit of effects, you know. And I don't, uh, well, I do use some EQ. I don't use the EQ on the board. I use basic EQ, uh, bass, treble, and mid, uh, and the gain. That's gain up there. That's all I use uh, is what's in the VM. And really the reason I did that, do it that way, is because there is a little bit more EQ in the board than that. Well, no, it's not. It's the same. Yeah, it's only a three band, so it's not it's no no real gain. I don't the same brand, you know, this is newer than this, but uh the, the, the board's newer than the V amp. But it's they're both Behringers, so there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference. So I've got that flat on the board and uh my, I saw my router was rebooting, I thought, Oh crap, my string but I'm not streaming. Uh I already had this V amp all set up and what I was doing for a year or two before I got this board, or maybe three. I, I used my SM58 with uh, high, low impedance to high impedance adapter and plugged it straight in to the V-amp. And it was pretty low on the volume. I had to really keep close to the mic and everything. I didn't have a lot of any headroom, any headroom. Um, but it worked fine. Um, but then w once I got the board, it's just it's just the way I want it. I got plenty of headroom and everything. And, but I, I already had the EQ set. I already had my compression noise gate set. So um, I just didn't. I just didn't think there was any reason to change that, you know. I thought about it, and I'd have to try to get these back to flat and then put the EQ with this. But uh, anyway, I guess if, if I can't stop talking, my body will tell me you need a break, and uh, I have to stop talking. So I'm done trying to figure out what I figured out. I'm just going to go and um, see you later.